forward and back. Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's forward and back. We're going again. Just um, not really much of a plan other than coming to talk about the wheel. So we've hit 500 kilometers relatively quick, I think, you know, just out as much as possible and having fun the whole way. But I just had a look at the app before and we've got 529 kilometers. I thought we'd uh, roll and just discuss my thoughts. And also I might just cover off some of the app features. Somebody asked if I might be able to go over that. So that's a good little video today. Maybe not a long one and I'm going to head to a new place that I've never been. So yeah, I'm going to go this way and um, make a little video for you all. Thanks for coming along. Won't be too long. And I'll chat about how the wheel feels and things I've found in the short time we've been friends. Thanks for all the support and the new people coming. Um, yeah, talk soon. So the 500 kilometers I've put on this wheel, we've had a bunch of interesting adventures already and in a range of different things. So it's showing me it's as versatile as the V11, probably more so. And you know, I've still got room to adjust things and get used to things. But I straight out of the box basically just took it, um, did the minimum amount of setup really, and just started to roll off a charge. So, you know, you make sure initially that you charge it up. I think the instructions say over 80%. Um, and then pump up your shocks, and there's some measurements you know there for different weights it's a bit of a guide and then you've got that dampener to play with which is you know everybody is a little bit in a gray area just trying to figure that out so um after some rolls i started to play with that and i was cautious and just used a finger to use the tools that come with it and symmetrically turned each of those um, you know dampener settings i, I turned them at the same time just one full circle each time. You could even try half at a time and just try to get it to a point. So I went all the way to the right where it seemed to tighten. And then from there, I just brought it back one full click anti-clockwise at a time. And I might spend a bit of time shooting some better footage to show you that. And in that time, that started to become a little bit more comfortable for me. You know, it's got good bounce, but it returns nicely and it doesn't pogo to throw me off which some people find if you're going downstairs, you know, you get that bounce happening and that feedback from each pogo sort of intensifies and you just bounce off. just showing here I found it's a nice way to pick it up if you just try to grab it by the handle the tire rolls and it gets a bit difficult it sort of puts extra weight but if you kick your foot just under the front of the tire grab that handle it just stays still it makes it so much easier so other than that I've put these little pads up the top just to stop my knee guard scratching because of this hinge velcro stayed on the Grizzlers, um, the, yeah, I've got some replacement sticky back to put on that after the crash. And I've got a couple of battle scars, but I do have some new bars coming. Looks like I've got a bit of a scratch from the trail there, just on this guard. So there's a little guard and those pedals. They copped it in that crash too. And we'll also just have a look down here, see how the pressures are holding in these chambers. So I'll just do that now. So yeah, I'm just going to get my pump out, we'll unscrew that and just see if it's leaked at all. I think it should be about 180 psi on that uh, chamber there. 
but much easier to work on than the V11. Yeah, so look, it's up at 200. It's held perfectly. I must have left it at 200. And I've been lying and I haven't bled any out. So let's just drop it down a little bit. Use my bleed pump. And that's sitting. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Being about 180 there. So undo the little bleeder valve at the back of the in-motion pump as well. And that'll just allow you to remove that without losing your air. I'll just check the other side and get that even. Make sure they're the same on both sides. And that might be nice to feel it with a little bit less than 200. But that's held beautifully over the 500 kilometers. And yeah, I've been testing it out quite a bit. On those trails and the jumps in the last video anyway. And then you just pop your red knob back on. And that protects the valve from being smashed up. So don't forget that. Okay. Yeah, so that's beautiful. It's sitting at 200 again. And I'll just bleed that back out. Happy with that. Get rolling. And I've checked the tyre. That's 35 PSI. I'm happy with that at the moment. And plus there's a couple of gangsters coming. So I want to roll out of here before they put a cap in my ass. But overall, for especially what I've put it through, it's held up really, really well. So I've hit my um, top speed on this wheel already. You know, I've had a nice range test. We've done some speed runs. Um, had a durability test. Um, got used to, you know, a few of the dampener settings and the speed, the power assists, the accelerator assist and brake assist. At the moment, I've got my accelerator assist at... Uh, 45% and my brake assist at Somebody reached out in the comments and asked if I might be able to um, go over the app a little bit. So I thought that I'd do that today just really quickly. Downloaded the InMotion app from the App Store. I'm using iOS and iPad. You can use Android device and get it from Google Play Store. So it's just called InMotion. It's orange with an eye icon. So hi, welcome to InMotion app forgot password login so you're going to need to set yourself up your login details so you just need to agree to some terms there and that's just searching now um, we couldn't oh it's searching for my vehicle so no vehicle found so what we might need to do now is go and just power up your wheel and it's found that there but here we go, it's come up already, all of my stats, which is great. I've also got the uh, V11. I thought I'd show you if you've got two vehicles, how that will work. I'll just turn that one on, same thing. Just pop it back on the stand. So now if I go up to Ford and back and I click that, it's actually going to search. I'll search for vehicles and it's found two. V13 connected before, V11 hasn't been connected. So I'll just connect that one as well. And there we go, that's got uh, all my details from that account. So by just going up to the top and clicking on the name of the vehicle, you can then just switch between. So I won't spend too long today. This is a real quick overview because it's really hot. The time you've been running that trip for, you've got your maximum speed from that trip. You've got your speed and your total mileage. Here you've got a lock, which you can lock and you hear the wheel click, unlock, so this is your headlight on or off. This is your horn, nice little feature. And then you're into your settings over here. So this is where you get into a bit more in depth. 
So you've got your speed clamp, which you can set if you've got local laws that you might require you to stick to 25 kilometers per hour. Then you've got your speed limit. You can click on that, adjust the slider, and set your speed limit for where you'd like. If I move that down to 80 kilometers, you'll hear the audible tone from the wheel, and you'll also get succeed on the screen. So make sure you look for that. Sometimes it does say failed or doesn't connect. So we'll just take that back succeed quickly going through your pedal hardness so your pedal hardness is to do with how floaty the pedals feel sort of feels like a really hard board uh, at a hundred percent but I guess it feels like a hard board on water if you take it all the way down so it just sort of gives it a floaty effect you can try that adjust it see how you go and then your pedal assist features you can turn that on or off and just have it without any of those assistance or you can go through and adjust. Now I've got my accelerator assist at 45% and brake assist at 65% and I've just played with that. Below that you've got your balance angle. So this is how your wheel basically sets up. So you'll see here if I bring it up, I'll try and do this real time. You see it tilted back there. I'll come a little bit further and you can really decide how you want to ride so yeah that's how the balance angle works so then you've got your vehicle calibration you can come through here and if you're having troubles you can do a balance calibration turning calibration and self-adjustment on motor so yeah your balance calibration it's just saying if the vehicle still tilts back or forward on the ground after you have set the balancing angle to zero then you can try this calibration. Look, I guess you just dive into that if you're having some issues and possibly speak to the in-motion service people beforehand. Then you can step down to diagnosis. So that's just di gonna diagnose for any errors. No errors found yet, that's a good sign. Below that you've got your sound features. So you can jump in and turn the audio off. You can set up some default sounds. You can have a transformer talk to you if you like. So you can go through and um, audition them on your phone. So you come through here, you can play, okay here, so it's loaded up. So we've got the sounds here. If I just hit the headphone. Turn that up so you can hear me. It's pretty nice, I like it. Yeah, so you can go through that and adjust that. You can also set up your own sounds up the top. You've got DIY. So you can click on that. Load in a full sound pack. You do have to have them saved, I think, in a certain name and a certain time length. They're only really small samples. So we can have a play with that. Um, then you can load in, um, change your volume as well. Standard things. So then onto your lighting, you've got a DRL, which is your daylight running globe, running light. So that's just the little ring light. You can turn that on or off. Others, you're into your vehicle information. This is where you can set up your password and you can put in a different, um, you can turn the password on or off or set up your password details there. Vehicle information, that's where you can go in and change your avatar or your name for the vehicle, and that loads across to that display screen, which is pretty awesome, I liked that. Transport mode, if you're gonna be moving around. Berm angle mode, shout out to Lee. So that's if you're gonna hit the tracks and get, you know, on, if you're gonna lean the wheel right over, like on a dirt track or your trails, and you don't want it to cut off at a certain angle, you can adjust that, so that's a safety feature for those people that are really getting it sideways on a corner. And that's a great little add-on if you need that there. Factory reset and firmware updates. So if you click into firmware update, it does a quick search. No new firmware found. That's great. So that's pretty much it in the um, in the settings cog there. Below that, you can access your about vehicle information quicker. You've got serial number, all of your details, when it was activated, all of the parts associated. Come down halfway, you know, Towards the bottom, just above owner information, you've got your writing record. Now if you load up your writing record, this is where you're going to start to see all those trips that you've taken. 
You can then log in and click onto them to get a little bit more of a snapshot about each trip. Um, so yeah, there's a bit of information there. You used to get maps and overlays and you could record things, but you know, I guess that might be coming. Then yeah, you step into your owner information, you know, all standard kind of things in there. But um, your battery information, I guess, is probably one of the last things you really need to look at. Um, it's such a great way to keep an eye on your wheel and you get to monitor all your cells, the temperature, the cell voltage. So it's going to show you if there's any abnormalities, error statuses. It's beautiful. There's a lot of information that I'm still getting my head around, but just being able to have a quick visual to see that things look good and there's no red things, that's great for me. It just gives me peace of mind when I'm charging. Below that online service, so if you need to contact the guys at Emotion, you can just leave a message, frequently ask questions. And you know, that's pretty much it. You can uh, go into a Discover tab down the bottom, which sometimes loads up some gear, pretty pictures. And you've got a Me tab, which just gets into your account details with Emotion. So there you go. I might just quickly switch vehicles. I just wanted to see what happens if I uh, switch it to the V11. I wanted to see if there's any different settings or adjustments that pop up. So let's just connect to that again. I'll just click up the top, select the vehicle. Okay, so about vehicle. I just wanted to go into settings and see if it's got a different ride mode. Yeah, fancier, normal. It's great. So it does have the different settings, it seems. Drive mode off-roading, commuting. So speed limit set to 55. I don't think I can take that higher. Speed clamp, pedal hardness. Ride mode is basically um, whether you wanted to go into your faster modes. Vehicle calibration, balance angle, angle. You've got split mode, which is kind of similar to your power assist, I guess. So you can have a play with that. And everything else seems to be the same. No load detection. Didn't see that on the uh, V13. But yeah, um, I guess, you know, jump in. Don't be afraid to play with some of those settings. And that's the way that you're going to set the wheel up and really dial things in for your needs. But I'll um, keep an update as they improve this new app and things are updated. You know, I'll do another quick video, but just wanted to keep it short. A real quick kind of overview today. And yeah, let's get back out riding. So uh, I'll be back on the wheel as soon as possible. Thanks so much for going through that video with me. Hope there was something there to help you. And yeah, share it around. I'll see you next time for another, another roll. Bye for now. Board.